Hello. 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 My name is Richard Seamus, and joining me from Toronto for this conversation is Eva Goyen, pianist, composer, and performer, and media artist and filmmaker Sue Reinhardt. We're going to talk about Duet for Solo Piano, a film by Sue Reinhardt based on Eva Goyen's creation of the same name. Both women are award-winning artists with impressive records of creation and presenting their work for Canadian and international audiences. Eve, Sue, good afternoon. Bienvenue à Montréal. Thank you. And thanks for joining us all in this conversation for the FIFA public. So, Duet for Solo Piano is a live concert, a web doc, and a film. That's a whole lot, but I'm going to try mm -hmm. to keep this around the film so that the FIFA audiences who see the film in the festival can relate to it. So can you tell us just a little bit uh, about how you came together to collaborate on the film? One at I, a time or at the same yeah, time yeah. as you wish? No, I think it started, well, Eve and I have known each other um, for a long time and not necessarily as close friends, but you know, just knew each other in the community um, at large and we're always uh, fond and interested in each other's work. So I think uh, a few years ago, actually probably three years ago now, I got just got an email from Eve that had the subject line short film and then a question mark. <laughs> And uh, honestly, it just started from that. She didn't say what it was going to be about. She just said short film, question mark. Yes, yes. Yeah, really. Like it was totally wide open. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Early in the film, Eve says in somewhat of a, con of a confessional tone, I did ask for change. I got change. So what was this urgent need for change? Change from what? Just, you know, can you talk about that a little bit? I tend to do this. I don't know what it is about me. Uh, I seek reinvention almost continually. Um, and for me, um, I've been, well, I mean, you see the trajectory of my life through the film, but I started playing the piano, went through traditional standard repertoire. Then I came to Toronto, I met composers, started playing music by living composers. And then I realized too, um, and then I sort of, uh, and then it became a little bit, I was aware that there was a gender issue around that and that playing living composers uh, meant that I could also play music by women composers and that just sort of, but it was, it was, I always felt like I was trying to get closer and closer to the creative source. Um, and now, as you've mentioned, I'm now creating for myself, but in creating for myself, I've also re tried to reinvent the piano for myself too by augmenting its uh, tonal possibilities through technology and also creating a notation that for me represents the instrument more how I feel it under my fingers than traditional uh, notation. Um, so it's almost like, um, it's almost like I, can, I don't know, it's almost like I'm always creating a new shell for myself to inhabit, mm -hmm. um, trying to get closer and closer to the core of me through this strange journey of um, Tr traditional practice with a traditional European instrument. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a bit odd. Like it, it kind of picked me or I picked it, but it, and I'm trying to make, manipulate it to be um, something closer to, to, to me in some way. And the journey just keeps unfolding. And I, what I love about Sue's film is that, that, that there's a path that is shown um, that we don't see the, we don't really see the finished product. And I feel that it reflects Two, it reflects me as an artist because I've, I'm not a finished product. Like, I mm -hmm. keep changing um, and I accept the change. And um, yeah, so anyway, I don't, that's a long answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it felt uh, urgent, huh? It, it feels urgent when you say that. And it seems to be set up in the film as clearly a kind of a, a, a major theme that's in front of us. And it helps me watch the film and think about it in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And the title of the film is Duet for Solo Piano. Now, I can imagine various duets in the film, but I'm curious what your opinion, what, where are the duets for you? Who is, who is the other player or the other presence that's there? Sorry. For me? Yeah, well, sure. I mean, there's, <laughs> and there are always duets. I mean, I'm, uh, with when I'm playing other people's works, there's the duet with the composer. Um, and there is the piano. I mean, the piano is a partner. Um, the piano does its own things. I'm always listening to it, no matter how much I practice. 
the variables are infinite between uh, whatever the resonances are or the instruments that I'm playing. It's constantly not predictable, and that's good. I mean, just like we are not predictable either um, uh, on our day-to-day -day basis, but those unpredictabilities allow for are stimulating. They're like uh, constant improvisations. But yeah, the duets are so many levels. I like, and then mm -hmm. the augmented piano too is actually another piano. There's a piano, the acoustic piano, and then there's the model piano that I reveal. So in that piece, that's. But there's always, always duets. There's always partners. There's little, the partner of Sue. I mean, there's the layers are. Just there's just so many layers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you felt like you were with these other partners, not just one, but many of them as you, as you made the, the work from the beginning. Mm. And um, you opened the live performance in 2018, right? At the Luminato Festival. Mm. Sue, what was your reaction when you saw the performance for the first time? Do you remember? Well, I didn't see the performance before we made the film. Oh, you didn't? No, no, we started filming in the rehearsal stage. So that was the process. So the, the, um, I mean, I guess from the backtracking to the short film email, I had thought I would make an interactive piece because I wanted something to complement the live performance. So we started early. Eve was just starting this rehearsal. And like Eve was saying earlier about this change and transformation, she wasn't just going to walk on a stage and sit down and play a piano. She was reinventing the instrument. She was also going to do something more theatrical, something that was more like a show, something that involved elements using voice and projections and things that really, really pushed her out of her comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And so I went to one of the early, early rehearsals and I immediately knew, I thought, oh shit, like one, we had a you know really fascinating day of filming, but also I thought there's a lot here. There's a lot more than I can contain in my short story. There's a lot I see, and there's a lot I would really, really like to make a larger work on. So mm -hmm. we kind of built, I mean, I committed to doing the interactive, which I'm very pleased with as well, but I also just decided to keep filming. We had a really great small crew and we filmed in a kind of observational style and what was interesting was that the film, it kind of is about an artist's creative process. And that's really what we focused on. We focused on what what you go through when you start from, you know, a rehearsal studio and a, a bunch of ideas and get a small group of people together and and the journey along the way. And it also became a, a personal journey for Eve because mm -hmm. um, there's things you encounter when you're pushing yourself as an artist that go back to who you are as a person. So we brought in little elements about backstory and personal life as they intersected with the creative life. Mm -hmm. So it became quite layered in that way. But uh, yeah, no, we I didn't see I didn't see the performance until until we were done. <laughs> you were completely finished yeah. with the filming when you saw the performance. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Well, yes. there you go. Yeah. So was it um I'm thinking of all the parallels and I'm wondering for you, was it as much an adventure and a need for change or a need for exploration as it was for Eve? Did you somehow feel like you were on a parallel journey, whether aesthetically, formally, or uh, with regards to your work in making films? Well, I think, yes. I think in that with Eve, we just, decided to trust ourselves in the situation and the creative process was really open and she was very open and quite vulnerable in that I mean who wants to show a work before it's done I mean let's face it no matter what you're making even baking a cake you know you know you don't want anybody to see it till it's ready but uh but she was open and therefore it allowed you know we were kind of open and I think we all um I didn't have I had obviously ideas that I wanted to develop and things that I intuitively pursued, but there was no script. There was no strict vision of what this film was going mm -hmm, to be. Mm -hmm. So it, that what we encountered um, along the way, you know, you just intuitively dug deeper into something or you intuitively turned left or right and developed something a little bit more. Um, but it all just came up 
it all arose. So we both had to be open in our respective mediums to that process. Mm -hmm. I think was that a, was that a new experience for you? Excuse me, Eve. Was that a new experience for you, Sue? Uh, in terms of the of documenting someone in a creative process, yes. Mm -hmm. Eve, you want to yeah, I think it might be interesting just to say that the genesis of the film was not really intentional. I mean, so the originally it was um, the the material was captured for um, the the web doc. I mean, so the 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 online the the interactive, and then uh, because of the material that you were shooting in, so it, it was, um, it, it transitioned, it became more than one thing. And maybe you want to describe that and um, a little bit more, Sue, because I think part of your process also has to do with the fact that the that it became, the, it became a film. Um, well, I guess I knew once we started shooting Okay. Uh, in that observational kind of intuitive style that I knew we wanted to keep shooting uh, until the, you know, the performance and until we got to the end and to also follow the, the journey that the artist was going on to create the work and as well as what that work brings up in you personally when you're creating. Um, but I didn't know how long the film would be or the shape of it until we actually started editing. Mm -hmm. And in a way, when we started editing, the the film dictated it its own form. Like we, you know, we decided, well, it was not even like we made a conscious decision to start not start with, yeah, I went to school here and I grew up here. You come across some of that information, but it comes up when we need to know it or when it, when Eve is digging into something personal that makes makes that story you know, come alive or be relevant to where she is in, in the creative process. So, so we really didn't, um, you know, impose a structure on it. And I, we worked with an editor who's also someone we, even I both know, Caroline Christie, who, and we were quite bold with how we cut the film and the things <laughs> we did with Eve and her team and her work and how we juxtaposed ideas. And we never started at the beginning, you know, um, I mean, the film kind of starts early, but then we cut to a scene that's actually going walking onto the stage of the final performance so it's it's very non-linear in that sense but it follows a psychological or mm -hmm. journey okay. perspective rather than a beginning middle end but we really discovered that in the edit we really um we took a lot of liberties and i have to say we were a little worried some days i'd say to carol oh, what do you think eve's gonna think of this you know <laughs> do you think we can do this but um we didn't show her obviously anything until the very very end she hadn't seen a frame so that was uh, also pretty a pretty interesting day when we showed each other, but it all were it was uh, it was good. It was it all we were all um, pleased. So so that anticipates exactly two other sort of things I was curious about. Eve didn't participate at all in in the film editing or any certain of those choices about script and things like that. No. no. And Eve, what did you think when you saw that film for the first time? Uh, I was really reticent. It took me a very long time to view it. And, um, and yeah, I had to have people around me. Like I had to, I, and I, I, I really didn't want to see it because I don't really like to see myself. I was really frightened. Hmm. But then um, very early on, I relaxed because I just was started to be very engaged in the, the style of the film. And I didn't really feel I felt very, I felt how I, I don't know how to explain it. I felt very comfortable with it. I, I didn't feel even though I, I was, I'm revealed as being vulnerable, but that is, I, I trusted it. And I, and I, and I, and I felt, in, I just felt very engaged with it as a film. I very much, very soon after viewing it, I stopped thinking about it being, a, didn't feel like it was so much about me. Like I, the, the fear, the fear disappeared and I was very grateful. I just felt very grateful that this film had been made. And I think it's just really wonderful. Um, it's a really wonderful piece of art, and and and, and by giving S Sue and Caroline freedom with the material, I mean, I, of course I did, uh, but um, it's their art form, and I watched it as a piece of art, um, and that it, it was I I don't know I, I I was actually it was it was it was also an interesting part of the journey because mm -hmm. I'm uh, well probably nobody likes to watch themselves, so I just. You know, I could, maybe most people don't, but uh, maybe everyone would feel the same. But it was, um, I was very reticent. 
Mm -hmm. But I'm very relieved and very grateful now. <laughs> yeah, that's wonderful. It's a wonderful film. Mm -hmm. You know, you say something else at one point in the film about the, the issue of performing, and you say, I either have to stop or embrace it. And what you just said really indicates clearly that, you know, you decided to embrace it. And and that's obviously uh, uh, something that performers and creators confront a lot in different ways. And I think the film, what you're highlighting about the trust really shows how much you embraced it and how much the filmmaker and the other people who collaborated also embraced it. And I think that's obviously some of the some of the quality of the film. There's some stunning images, physical images in particular. For example, the one, the close up on the lips when I think you're doing uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the language piece from Linda C. Smith and the trapezius muscles in the back. Those are clear choices for me and selections that reveal something about the filmmaker. You know, I don't know how to articulate what that thing is, but I'm wondering, Sue, you, when you think about those images that are clearly things that you saw and decided to place in certain ways and treat in certain ways, do they mm -hmm. reveal particular things for you? I think I was inspired to do uh, well, to move beyond the observational filmmaking in that I wanted to create kind of a series of tableaus um, that re reflected the theatrical nature of the piece too, and that Eve wasn't simply sitting at the piano, that there were these elements of costume, of lighting, um, of course, and of which I hadn't even seen the final, but textures and details and the kind of detail they would work out in the you know, in the performance and just um, the rehearsal pr rehearsal process. So it was just, I just, yeah, no, I'm, I am a pretty visual person. So I wanted just to bring, and they're also, those are also tableaus are also shot in very slow motion. So they reflect, they're all derived from gestures that she does in the performance mm -hmm. um, that are beyond the piano. They're somewhere at the piano, but a lot of them are up when she's moving in the stage area. And so they, yeah, it was just really, really taking those apart and looking at them and filming them in a very stylized uh, way where they kind of suspend time. Um, and, and they were useful practically in the other, they're, they're useful for mood and tone and, and, and creating emotion in the piece, but they were also useful to help us move through the film um, in a, in a, you know, a vis interesting visual way. Mm -hmm. They really stand out. They really stand out in a, mm -hmm. in a um, sumptuous, that's the kind of mm -hmm. word that sort of stands out for me. I'm also curious a little bit in terms of the um, film versus the live performance. Uh, so I guess since you haven't seen the live performance, Sue, you perhaps don't have exactly that perspective, but even from an almost theoretical point of view, the film, I assume, is not going to change. It's every, every viewing will basically see the same mm -hmm. thing. The live performance, if it's continued to be performed, will always change, sometimes in minute ways. It'll be affected by the venue, it'll be affect, affected by audiences, by the energy of the performer, by the piano, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm curious about what your reflections are on the fundamental difference between the two mediums that that work exists in. I know it's not the film is not exactly a film of the live performance, it's something else, but it contains that inside. And I'm wondering if you have any sort of reflections on how different those two experiences, or similar perhaps. Mm -hmm. Well, That's a tough question, eh? No, I actually don't know if film is a fixed medium because anytime, like if you watch the thing three times, you're, you're actually different each time and the the screen is different and the mm -hmm. audio is different um and if i were to see that film in a, with a live audience the audience would change how i saw the film probably with their reactions if they laughed at certain parts or if they walked out mm -hmm. or if they booed or i don't know i mean i i mean you know with the with a making a, a recording of a piece of music like an audio recording it's the same thing too just sort of it's out there in the world for people to digest um and then it's just a different thing. And I don't know if it's, it's just kind of wonderful that this film exists, um, that there are these layers of 
uh, uh, interpretation, you know, that this is an interpretation and then it gets interpreted by the viewer, the viewer listener, and it's the same thing with an audience. And of course, I mean, the live performance, maybe it's the same with live film screening. There's a, there's a wonderful energy um, around it and that there's a community. Um, so maybe, Sue, so you can talk about a live film screening because this, this film is not going to receive it at this festival, but um, it's a different thing. Yeah, if you're at, that's one thing I much prefer of making independent films that are screened with audiences. I mean, you have the opportunity as a filmmaker to be with your audience, especially in a festival. And I'm really sorry with COVID that we won't be able to engage with the audience in that way. But I, I think coming together in a theater is is a remarkably interesting shared experience where that live nature changes, you know, changes how people watch the film. Um, but I do agree with even that I think, well, I, I think the performance, obviously your performance on stage will change as, as was suggested, but I think film viewing changes in terms of if you watch a film more than once, sometimes you see things mm -hmm. that you never mm -hmm. saw before mm -hmm. and things like that. But um, I think so also in time, I think this film is gonna age really, really well because I think we caught Eve at an interesting point in her career too. I think that it'll be, interesting to see this five years, 10 years, 20 years from now. It was a, it was a, ch you know, a very challenging moment of, of exploring, really deeply exploring the work as an artist and, um, you know, transitioning from, you know, interpreter to composer and, um, yeah, just pushing oneself on into doing a stage performance. So I, I don't know, it was, it, it's going to, Stand the test of time so I think it'll have a life of its own in that regard. I, I agree because I mean I, I was thinking too about the composers that are featured and uh, the type of composers that they are like the, they actually represent a type of composer that is a transitional type of composer um, like Michael Snow or John Oswald and Nicole Lise and Linda you know with the with the use of the poem um, so I think that they I hadn't really thought about that before uh, but they they the content also represents a transition into like sort of it's almost like I'm on tiptoes about interpretation because uh, the Michael Snow and the John Oswald are not true like this there's no the scores are just so unusual right mm -hmm. so it's not like I'm also I'm about to jump off that place you know and uh, so uh, whether I you know walking back and forth into those worlds of interpretation or like straight interpretation or more theatrical place or you know, uh, or improvisation or working with technology, those are all represented in this film. Um, yeah, I, I agree, Sue. Mm -hmm. You should have like an annual viewing of the film. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are there any more plans to do the live performance, Eve? Oh, uh, well, this is a really weird yeah. time to ask yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. <laughs> toured uh, through certain places in Canada and it was going to Australia and then there was interest in the UK. But um, right now I think everyone is scaling down if anything. So to take, um, and it's kind of tricky for music presenters, this theatrical presentation actually. Because, sure. And my contacts are within the concert world. So it's a bit, a bit tricky, even though it's very, it's not that difficult. It still requires a bit more time in the theater. Um, even though we've we've been able to actually put it up and do it in a day, but it's not, it's hard. Um, yeah, so right now, well, actually it's just the wrong time to ask right now. It's on pause, <laughs> it's a pause, right? Yeah. 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 Listen, that's, I think, what we have to say about the project and uh, it's a wonderful film. I hope I can see it live also. Great. And Sue, Eve, and the FIFA audience, thanks so much for joining us for the conversation. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye.